reading to you from the sixth chapter of Mark and with the tenth verse. And he said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave town, and any place that does not receive you or listen to you as you go out from there, shake off the dust from the soles of your feet for a testimony against them. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this is Evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic. Gave my heart to Christ over 51 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. One year later, God called me to preach. Oh, friends, I wish you'd have been with me and my wife down the Denver Rescue Mission last night. Oh, I tell you, the Lord blessed 15 men came to Christ. And when they came, to, they came forward, and I have them always come forward when they put their trust in Christ. This one man said, Cecil, I haven't seen you in about five years. I saw you in the rescue mission down in uh, Florida. I said, boy, is this a small world. Well, friends, listen, I'll be with you for half an hour tonight. I wish you'd kick off your slippers. Sit back and relax. Pour you a glass of iced tea or a cup of coffee. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? If you have your Bibles with thee, turn with me to Luke, the 12th chapter, and with the 16th verse. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a certain rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no place to store my crops? And he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grains and goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul is required of you, and now... Who will own what you have prepared? So is the man who lays up treasure for himself, so is the man who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. I've uh, labeled this, dear friends, the high cost of being lost. Oh, listen, a cost of being lost is a very neglected subject. We preachers, like we like to speak on happy themes. Uh, like the the blessing of the Christian life or the prospect uh, of the joys of heaven. But I want you to know, friends, truth demands balance. We must face the cost of being lost, and then we must warn the lost to escape hell. You know, I've had people say, See, sir, it's none of your business whether I'm going to hell. Well, I said, the Lord said, make it your business. It's not that I'm mad at them. I want them to know that if they keep going the route that they're going without accepting Jesus Christ, they will burn in the devil's hell. Now, I've had people say, Cecil, I sure believe in a heaven, but I sure don't believe in a burning hell. Well, beloved, if you read your Bible you'll understand there is such a place. God never prepared hell for people like us. He prepared hell for the angels and the devil. Well, a sad parable of a lost man who lost absolutely everything. He is prosperous, but pitiful. He is rich, but ends his life in regret. Why the rich fool lost it all. 
You know, friends, and you've heard me say this several times, I don't go to movies not because I, I just don't like to go to movies. Uh, uh, and anyway, but these movie stars, I know I know a few movie stars, personal friends of mine, who, and one of them is an evangelist, and he went off the deep end. His daughters were movie stars, and they talked to her daddy, who was a tremendous evangelist, tremendous singer, and they talked to him to come into Hollywood, and, well, the last time I heard, he was off the deep end, no more preaching. He's out, he's doing his Hollywood thing. There's several people like that, and it's a shame. You show me a happy movie star, and I'll show you a miracle. Because they get all this money real fast. And, you know, I've been told, I don't know if this is true, but I guess the people who reported knew what they were talking about. People who win great sums of money, uh, like the lottery, usually end up bank bankrupt and divorced. And they ne got, never got to enjoy any of that money. Well, his happiness was limited to the happenings of the earth. And I read in verse 16, and he told them a parable saying, the land of a certain rich man was very productive. Well, everybody wants to be who's a, hey, listen, I was a future farmer of America four years in high school, and I truly loved it. And I wanted, I'll get this, I wanted to be a wheat and cattle rancher just like my dad. Oh, yes, I did. My stars, that's what I was going to be. Didn't end up that way. I ended up being a preacher, and I, I'm so glad. I am so glad that finally God got through to me that he had a plan for my life. Beloved, I want you to know he has a plan for your life tonight. Yes, he does. That if you're born again. If you're not born again, he wants you to be born again. But he has a plan and a purpose for what you're doing. I received a phone call at 6 o'clock in the morning the other day from a young man who I introduced to Christ here in Colorado, oh, my stars, a little over a year ago. And did you know, he said, Cecil, I'm having real problems with alcohol yet. He said, I'm trying. I said, son, quit trying and start trusting. You're not big enough to handle this alcohol problem by yourself. You have to let the Lord handle it. You know, the morning I was saved, I really didn't understand anything about the Bible. The one thing I knew, I was a sinner, and I was sorry for my sin. No, I wasn't sorry I got caught. I knew I was losing my wife and my family because of alcohol. But I was truly sorry for my sins. <clears throat> and, beloved, you cannot be saved tonight unless you're sorry, really sorry for your sins and be willing to look up and confess that Jesus is the Christ. Why did Jesus come into the world? Well, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's what he came for. Even tonight, did you know what he's doing? All over the world, his Holy Spirit is drawing hearts. Now, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. In prison last Sunday... There was uh, 12 or 13 or 14 uh, men and women accepted Christ. And uh, one of the men said, you know, Cecil, I met you here many years ago, and you were in a quartet and your wife. And I assume, he didn't say that, but I assume that he accepted Christ in that service. I, I'm just assuming. Then he said, then the next thing you know, I was sent to a state prison, which was down in Ordway. And he said, one Sunday, guess what? There you were, and there your group and your wife were. Now he said, I'm back here. Now he's done something wrong, or he wouldn't be back there. Something happened. But you see, lots of time we don't have time to talk to them. We do not have time. Well, anyway, back to the message. The ground of a certain man brought forth plentiful. Everything seemed to be going well. Well, you're going to be happy if you're 
ground has got plenty of fertilizer and, and, you, and you water it, you're, you should get a good crop. Success in farming make him very happy. Well, you and I know that investments here are always risky. I know people, I know a lot of Christians. Boy, they play that stock market just like a, like a gambler. And it is a gamble. I wonder if these people, now I'm, I'm just wondering if these people who play the stock market Christians, uh, I wonder how much they give unto the Lord. I wonder about that. Well, what financial reverses would have be done to him? Well, guess what happened? A drought would have devastated him. Too much rain would have ruined him. He had no inner peace for adverse circumstances. Oh, listen, friends. Only faith in Christ equips us for tough times. Read the 8th chapter of Romans. It, it will give it to you pretty straight. See the things. His holdings were limited to the harvest of earth. In verse 17, 18. And he began reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no place to store my crops? And he said, This is what I will do. He made a great decision. I will tear down my barns, and I will build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. Did you know, dear friends, what shall I do? His prosperity produced some real problems. Dear friends, when I was a little boy, I knew a, a farmer there out in the Dalles. Yeah, I, I can't remember his name right now, but anyway, he, his wife was a nurse, and he had uh, twin daughters. And he, during the World War II, he got very prosperous. His wheat really produced, and my uncle was actually working for him. And this man said, if I ever, ever get wealthy enough to get all the money I want, I'm going to buy as much wine as I want, and I'm going to drink. Did you know, dear friends, he did prosper during World War II. And did you know what he did? He went out and he bought I don't know how many cases of wine and put it in a bunkhouse. And, friends, he drank himself to death. He drank himself to death. Can you believe that? He started out. He wanted that. The reason is he had no peace. He had no purpose in life as far as he's concerned. And, friend, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have a purpose in your life. I'll guarantee you. He didn't know what to do, uh, what to do with his success. And his, in his increasing wealth truly complicated his life. He gave no thought to sharing with others. I can't find that in there. The rich fool suffered from eye trouble. This will I do. I will pull down my barns. His new barns will advertise his affluence. There will I bestow all my fruits. And my goods. Oh, listen. Wasn't that something? He had so much. And you know who gave him the increase in his harvest? God. But he didn't have time for the Lord. He was too interested in tearing down those barns that could not hold his crops. And he was going to build some larger barns. Everything this rich fool harvested was perishable. But listen. Listen. Faith in Christ prevents perishing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. His hopes were limited to the horizons of earth. I read in verse 19, And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease. Eat. Drink. And be merry. Now, if there was a period there and we didn't have another verse, we'd be okay, I guess. But God said the next verse, 
God said to him, You fool! This very night your soul is required of you, and now who will own what you have prepared? You know, friends, when God calls you a fool, you're in trouble. You're in big, big trouble. Well, the rich fool was prepared for his retirement, and he looked to the future with confidence. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. His plan for the future was faulty. He planned on ease, eating, and entertainment. Oh, beloved, here's what's wrong with this. He neglected to plan for eternity. That night he faced death, a grave, and hell. The rich fool would leave his riches behind. Others would own all that he had worked so hard to gain, and he would lose everything, including his soul. Oh, isn't that a sad picture? Oh, that's a sad picture. In conclusion, in verse 21, it says, So is a man who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. See, they invested their lives in temporal trinkets. You know, you see, you can tell where a person's heart is by his toys. He, they say when old men get old, they get toys, get convertibles, get younger wives, get divorced. Well, there's a lot of that going on, too. They could have come to Christ and gained eternal treasures. Friends, listen to me. Listen to me very careful. Real riches are laid up in heaven by those who trust in Jesus. Let me ask you, beloved, how rich are you tonight? Think about it. You know, one of the things that I, I've... You've heard me say this many, many times, and I've proved it by the Word of God. First of all, you can't outgive God. You sure can't. But you know, the Bible says, He that giveth unto the poor lendeth unto the Lord. I believe that Christians ought to be the most giving people in the whole world because I'll tell you, you can't outgive God. Now, you say, wait a minute, see, now nah, here, are you one of those a namer and claimers? No, I am not. If you will send me a $1,000 seed offering, your kids will all get saved. You'll never be a, in a hospital. You'll always have treasures. That is not true, beloved. That's sure not true. And I am not one of those evangelists. I don't ask anybody. Don't ask you for money, do I? I ask you for your prayers. That's what I ask you for. And and I expect you to pray for me. I don't charge or my ministry, because I believe God called me to do what I do. You say, Cecil, don't you believe in paying pastors? I sure do. And I believe that you should pay evangelists. I remember one time when I pastored my first church, uh, I uh, told our church we ought to start praying for revival, and we ought to call evangelists to come preach it. And they said, well, let's just uh, bring him on a love offering basis only. I said, not on this church, you won't do that. Now, I'm an evangelist, and I have never been overpaid to preach. I've very rarely ever got enough to pay for my plane fare over and back. I said, no, you, we're going to set a star. We're going to set, if it's $100, $200, $300, and then we will take a beloved offering after they get here. Friends, don't ever, don't ever cheat a, a, your pastor or an evangelist. No, they shouldn't be overpaid, but they should be paid because they have families. You know, friend, I, I belong in my denomination. I am in this book of evangelists for my denomination. And I bet you three-fourths of those evangelists are out working jobs because they don't make enough money to support their families. And the Bible says if we don't support our families, we're worse than an infidel. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, friends. I think we ought to think about that, especially for those of you who don't know Jesus. I wonder if God's Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart right now. And you feel, oh my, boy, I don't want to be lost. I don't want to go to hell. You don't have to go to hell, dear friends. 
Jesus is standing with outstretched arms right now saying, Come unto me, all you who labor and heavy laden. He also says, He that cometh to me, I'll no wise cast out. So don't tell me your sins are too great. Because if you're willing to confess it, you're willing to ask God to forgive you and to come in your heart, He will forgive your sins and He'll give you eternal life. Well, listen, you say, well, Cecil, I'll tell you what. I'm convinced tonight that I need to do that. I need to put my trust in Jesus. Well, if you do, if you're convinced, let's bow our heads right now. Now, I do not urge anybody to pray this unless you really repent and you're sorry for your sins. This is how the prayer goes. Kind Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner, and I'm so sorry, Lord, for my sins. Tonight I'm opening my heart and accepting you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, if you prayed that prayer, I would like to have you call me at 303-471-8534. If you can't afford the call, call me, collect. I'll pay for it. I don't care where you go to church. I'm only concerned where you spend eternity. I don't care what church you go to. Belonging to a church won't get you into heaven. You must be born again, thus saith the Lord. Well, friends, I'm standing by my phone right now, as I have for over 35 years. In fact, the matter will be 52 years this next week when I found Jesus or when he found me. Well, dear friends, I'm standing by waiting for your call. 303 471 85 Three, four.
true love has no weakness or dangers. Love never fails, never comes short. But remember, love is not indulgence and license. Love involves control and discipline as well as care and giving, selflessness and sacrifice. Well, dear friends, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Moe, and I want to thank you for listening to us. Please pray for our health and pray that we'll, God will continue to open doors in prison and rescue missions and wherever he leads us. And uh, friends, be sure and pray for our country and all our servicemen and women. Oh, I tell you, I love our country, I love our flag, and I'm proud to be an American. Well, until this time next Sunday night, I want you to be good to your neighbors. Stay sweet. Keep looking up. For this wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night, and may God bless you real, real good. <laughs>